Hi everyone, this video is a continuation of the Hoffman's inventory bar retracement method that we have introduced in the previous video. If you are interested in the code, you can download the Jupyter Notebook file from the link in the description below. For the strategy itself, I will not go through all the details as these were previously explained. In brief, we are looking for a certain slope angle defining the price trend and at the same time for particular shapes of candles where the tail is at least 45% of the whole candle's volume. In the previous video, we went through the details and we explained how to detect these bars in Python. And in this video, we are going to use these bars in a trading strategy, backtest our system and check the results. For this strategy, we are going to look for these particular shapes of candles in an uptrend or a downtrend. And we will check if there's a break above this candle's high in an uptrend or this candle's low in a downtrend. In this example, we have an uptrend and we are detecting this Hoffman's retracement bar right here, where the upper tail is longer than 45% of the whole candle's volume. This means that in the uptrend movement, sellers are trying to short the market and counter the uptrend movement. However, in the following candle, we can see that the closing price is higher than the high of the Hoffman's candle, the preceding candle, which means that the buyers are still stronger on the market and will more likely continue to drive the price up. To do this in Python, we will read every candle's closing price and check among its previous neighbor candles if any is a Hoffman's retracement bar now, as any algorithmic trading program, we will have adjustable parameters and this is our first one. How many candles should I check when looking for the Hoffman's bar? Is it 6 candles before the current candle? 5 or 10 candles before the current candle? Where do I have a Hoffman's bar? And to see if the current candle is breaking above or below the high or the low of Hoffman's candle. So the number of candles we're going to consider is a parameter that we can experiment on. It is left as a variable in our Python code. And of course, if we have a breakout, we will place a buying position if we are in an uptrend and a selling position if we are in a downtrend with a stop loss and take profit values. These can be ATR related or for example, we can place the stop loss first, taking into account the highest or the lowest values of the previous candles depending if we are in an uptrend or in a downtrend. All of this is going to be explained in details in the Python code. Okay, now let's write this strategy in Python and backtest it over a few months of data and see the results. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. I will not go through the first part since it was detailed in the previous video where we introduced the Hoffman's bar. In brief, we are loading 59 days of data using the Y finance module and the 15 minutes time frame. We reset the index, we compute the exponential moving average, the ATR that's going to be needed later on to compute the stop loss and the take profit values. The slopes of the moving average is also uh, calculated. Then this part here identifies the Hoffman's bars taking into account the slope of the moving average at this point and the shape and the measurements of the candles. So I'm not going through the details again. If you are interested in this code and the explanations, you might want to check the previous video where these details were explained. Then this part is for visualizing the signals on a chart. And this part here, I added the exponential moving average signal. This is where we're going to test if the candles are trading above or below the moving average curve, in which case we can say we have an uptrend and a downtrend. It needs a parameter called back candles, which is equal to six. So in this case, if we have six consecutive consecutive candles trading above or below the moving average curve, we can say we have an uptrend or a downtrend. And the whole thing here, this whole cell, this EMA signal is just an additional filter to confirm the price trend on top of the slope of the moving average that we have already calculated in this part right here. Then I'm defining a new function called the Hoffman break signal. It takes two parameters the L, which is the current candles index, and the number of back candles where I need to look for a Hoffman's candle pattern. Remember that we are trying to find a breakout above or below any Hoffman's candle. And this parameter right here, the back candles kind of limits the area or the number of neighbors candles where I'm going to look for the breakout. So in this function for each candle in the range between L minus back candle minus one. So it's the current candle looking back with a certain number of back candles up to the current candle. So this is a small slice of our data frame. If the signal is two, meaning we have an uptrend, remember here I'm using the L, which is the index of the current candle. So we have an uptrend at the current candle. 
And in any of the previous candles within the back candles frame, we have, remember I used the R index here, which is R between L minus back candles minus one up to the current candle, which is L. So if we have a total signal equal to two, meaning we have a Hoffman's bar uh, candle at some point and at the same time the current candle the closing price of the current candle the index L is greater than the highest high of R the candle the Hoffman's bar candle so in other words the current candle is breaking above the Hoffman's candle in an uptrend so if all of these conditions are verified in this case we have a buying signal so we are going to return two as a result and in the opposite direction if we have a downtrend we have a downward or inverted Hoffman's bar candle and at the same time we're breaking the lowest value or the lowest price with a current candle. In this case we have a selling signal and we are going to return the value 1. So at this point I have this function, it works well, I'm going to apply it for each row, meaning for each candle in my data frame. I'm going to store the results in a series and then I'm going to copy this series into our data frame so in a column which title is Hoffman break signal for the moment. At this point we can visualize everything and the signals and I'll not go through the details here as these methods were explained several times in previous videos. Here we can verify if our Hoffman candles are detected properly so I'm just going to show you a few examples. If I zoom in so we have a clear uptrend here so the point is below the candle because this is a Hoffman candle but it's in an uptrend so once we break out of this candle like if we have a candle closing above the high we're going to detect a buying signal and this is why we have this purple point right here below this candle because it's closing above the high of this previous Hoffman's candle and so on. So I'm not going through all the details of these candles for the moment it's just to show you that the code is working properly, we don't have any bugs and it's detecting the candles we would like to detect. And now we can proceed with the back testing. For this we will need to set the stop loss. In the case of an uptrend we are taking the minimum price among the previous few candles. So here it's simply four candles. And in a downtrend we're taking the stop loss equal to the highest price among the previous four candles. Then the take profit can be set easily considering a stop loss take profit ratio or a take profit stop loss ratio whatever you prefer. So I'm going to define a signal function that returns the Hoffman break and I'm using the backtesting module as usual just to backtest this strategy. The first a way of setting the stop loss and take profits is going to be ATR related so I'm taking four times the ATR to uh, set the stop loss and the take profit stop loss ratio is equal to 1.5 so I'm going to set the um, take profit taking into account this particular coefficient and we are allowing one single trade at a time the size of the trade is 20% of my equity we're considering a margin of 1 over 50 or a leverage of 1 to 50 a cash account of ten thousand dollars and we're going to test this strategy over the three month of data we have a return of 51 percent so it's positive for the moment we have a number of winning trade percentage of 50.9 let's say 50 percent the equity doesn't really show a stable increase but this is only a test over three months and we can also check the different way of setting the stop loss and take profits when we are taking into account the highest high a price or the lowest low price of the previous candles so this is right here I'm going to run this and we have a return of minus 4.8 percent so it's not working well for this uh, particular money management strategy and if we plot the equity we can see that it's not really stable it's not an increasing or a stable increase in the equity uh, movement. So this was it for this video. Please keep in mind that I didn't spend any time trying to optimize this strategy. I simply coded this in the minimum possible time and I'm simply showing you how it's done in Python. If its strategy is of particular interest to you, you can try and copy the code and maybe add some few additional technical indicators and make it work your own way. Thank you so much for staying that long. Until our next video, trade safe and see you next time.